We continued looking at Spark SQL in this video. Last time we left off where we had read in this CSV file, but we did it in kind of a simple default way. We have the Spark session has a read, which gives us an object that has a bunch of different reading capabilities, much more than the RDDs had. And we were able to tell it to read a CSV file. And that CSV file came in looking like this, uh, but all the values in it are strings and it has more values than we really care about. The file itself is not all strings and in particular it has a date and it has a number. And so we would like to tell Spark to handle those things properly. So the first thing we need to do is set up a schema for this, this data. So I'll make a val. I'm going to call it T schema for the temperature schema. Uh, this actually has more than temperature. In fact, if you look in this right here, uh, so we have T max and T min. We also have precipitation. We have snow. Uh, there's a number of other things in there, but I'll probably for now just be playing with, with temperatures. So we have this T schema. Uh, in order to set this up, we create a struct type and note that the struct type is inside of SQL types and we want to give it an array of the different basically columns in our data set. For each one of those columns we are going to make a struct field which is also inside of SQL types and we pass it a name for that and the type of data that, that we're pulling in. So the first one is our station ID. Uh, the second one is a date. The third one is the type of measurement. And the fourth one is the value that was measured. So station ID is the name I'm going to give this. I probably could simplify that, uh, shorten it up. I'm just actually going to call it SID because we're going to be referring to that a fair number of times. The SID is a string type. Once again, that is located in SQL types. In fact, I'm going to do quite a few of these. A lot of times in my program, I would just put an underscore there because I'm referring to so many of them. Comma, and very similar line two, three. Okay, so we have four of these. The second value was a date. The third value was the measurement type. And the fourth value was, how about we call it, value. Okay, it was what was measured, whether it's for precipitation or temperatures or whatever. This one is actually not going to be treated as string. And while it is a number, we're not going to treat it as an integer either. There is a date type that uh, Spark SQL knows about. The M type is a string. The value, they're all stored as integers, but because I intend to do some math with this, I am going to, to use the double type. Okay, so this gives me a schema. And now when I do this read, before I do the CSV, I can kind of add an option here. And the option that I want to add is I want to specify the schema to be T schema. Okay. How about we read that and see what that looks like. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. That's not quite happy. One problem that we have right now is that the date that is in this file really isn't a very standard type of date format. And so we should, we need to tell the reader that we want a different date format. And so one of the methods that we can call is an option method where we get to specify the key as a string and in this case, I want to specify the date format and then a value for, in this case, how it is formatted. The format they use is four digits of year, two digits of month, and two digits of day. Let's see if that makes things happier. Hmm. 
There we go. Okay, so first off, notice the schema. String, date, string, double. But we had that before. It was able to, <laughs> to do that because we had told it that that was the schema that we were using. But it wasn't able to read these properly without knowing how to read in the dates, and that basically caused it to fail to read every single row. With that information in there on how to parse this, it can now read in these rows, and it gives us basically the information that we wanted to see here. Okay, so with this read in, we should now look at some of the other methods that we could do on our data frame uh, just to see simple manipulations and, and see how they compare to the RDDs. We'll do that, and then after we've done a little bit of that, we'll try to read in the other data file uh, and see how we can combine the two to make more interesting information.